right, welcome everyone. It's Chris Petri. Thanks so much for coming by. We're actually going to do a beautiful uh, painting today. We're actually going to work on some figures in a market type scene, a flea market, a antique market, a um, uh, fish market, any kind of market you can think of along the oceans, uh, out in the um, beautiful uh, countryside, farmers markets. That's the kind of idea we have here. Now, we had a really fun uh, email that came in from one of my our friends here on YouTube. Um, uh, he sent it, Roy, his name, his name is Roy. He sent in a photograph here and he says, hey, Chris, I, I really enjoy this photograph. It's someplace nearby where I live. I took a picture and I want to, I, he says, I'm, I want to try to paint this and I'm not sure how, how it's going to turn out, but I was wondering if you could kind of do this type of painting. And I looked at the photograph and then I just emailed back and said, you know what? I, I think it's a beautiful paint um, photograph and it looks exciting as a photograph. But then when I kind of thought in my mind for a few minutes, I realized I have tried this type of painting n a number of times over the years. Going even, I, m I remember way back when I was first starting watercolors and even numerous times since then, I've tried doing these farmer market style paintings with the angle like it is here. And I just find it gives me so much difficulty for some reason. I just can't have it look good. It just doesn't turn out right. And I also think that all these small details here really, really cause me a lot of anxiety because I never seem to be able to get the small details of all these fruits and vegetables and, um, you know, things like that along this, um, uh, these, these stands here along this roadway here in this market to look good. So I thought I just replied back and said, you know what, I've tried these a number of times and they always give me a, a difficult, uh, you know, time of it trying to paint this type of a painting in watercolor. So what I mentioned was I usually, what I like to do is find, um, photographs that look more two dimensional where there's no angles really so much, but I'm looking straight into a picture like two dimensionally like this. And I, I also mentioned that I like to zoom into something and just have more simplified subject matter in the painting like this, because there's so many details in here that I just find that again, that I have so much trouble with this. I like to do this more. I try to think like a photographer and, um, take a, a scene and then zoom in like a, a zoom lens with a camera and zoom into it and then pick a, you know, a couple figures, two or three figures, maybe zoom into those figures and try to capture that smaller, but more, you know, uh, interesting snapshot of a scene like so with figures, three figures, tables, antique. This is an antique market I found on a picture and let's take a look. This is the photograph we're going to work from. So let's go to photos and there we go. So that's the photo. It was a larger photograph and I just cropped in on the picture and zoomed in on just these three figures. The original photograph that I had that I found online, there was two or three other figures in that um, photograph and it was a larger photograph with more information. My idea was I'm thinking like a photographer. I want to zoom in and capture less subject matter and just kind of work with what is more uh, interesting with less information. So I went with less information, but nonetheless, exciting information, three figures. They're all here in the antique market. They're looking at things. They're checking things out. Maybe this gentleman here is the owner of the um, stand and he's working with these other people. Maybe this woman's the owner of the stand and she's talking with these people, um, you know, and they're talking about purchasing something in this antique market. And, you know, we have tables and nightstands and old sewing machine, antique sewing machines and kind of information like that and a nice beautiful white umbrella. So we're, we're going to do this painting. We're going to try it this way. And again, I, I find that trying to simplify these scenes a little more and kind of not going with too much details with very, very fine details is going to be helpful for us. So you tell me what you're the artist. You tell me in the comment section what you think about this. Is it easier to paint a scene like this or do we want to try to paint those scenes with all those little fine details? Maybe you do like to do that. That's fine too. If you can find a way to create your paintings, you're the artist. If you want to go with paintings with more details, I just find that I, I like to simplify things a little more, make it a little more easier for me to um, draw and paint the subject matter that I'm going to create. And this had a beautiful sense of light too, by the way. The sunlight's coming from the left side over here and coming across the painting. Picture, photograph. 
so you can kind of see how we got some beautiful light here on the um, figures and then across the umbrella and the buildings here the uh, barns in the background and so I think this is a really fun painting you're gonna have a great time working along with me and um, so let's get started all right we just saw the finished painting and I hope you work from that if you can. You can always use multiple devices. I just mentioned this in the beginning as we're starting our video. Uh, this is the photograph we, uh, we worked from. And then we got to our end result of our finished painting. And then you saw that just, you know, a second ago. And then I would say you could also, if you want, I'm going to leave this painting up to the right here when we're uh, on the right of the um, paper here as we're working. So you'll see it on camera. But don't forget, you can always have two devices. You can always have a... A, you know a phone with this picture on it and you can set up this phone across from you or even an iPad a larger uh, you know almost like a large version of a phone an iPad you can have that set up across from you on your art by your art table or wherever you're working in your lap you can have it set up on a coffee table or a stack tray whatever you like to do and um, use that as your subject matter painting from this photograph or even my finished painting whatever you like but it would kind of benefit you if you do like to work from photographs or my finished painting to have a secondary device. So you might have a laptop or a home computer, whatever it is, a phone, an iPad. You can have that set up. And then you can also have like your laptop running with the video. So you're working along with me as we go step by step. And then you also have another device like, again, anything, an iPad, an iPhone or another computer or even a TV screen with the same photograph or painting you want to that we're working on and working from so that you have it um you know also as an alternative thing to um work from and uh, you know your subject matter is important you want to see it as you're working from it it's kind of hard just to work from you know just working on a, a video without seeing the subject matter so i'm always trying to get more um in tune with everyone everyone and what everyone wants to see on my videos so i'm always going to be trying to get as much as i can sometimes i can't always put a photograph or a painting in, in on the camera because sometimes it's copyrighted but this is a photograph I found and I don't think it's copyrighted so we can use it so I'll put this up so I'll zoom out so use whatever means you can to get the result you want and you know if you you know like I said you can always use multiple devices you know you can have an iPad or an iPhone across from you on your table and then you could be watching a laptop computer or a home desktop computer with the video along with me here right now and then you know you you'll have maybe a better view of this photograph because right now when I put it over here, you can see it, but I'm not so sure it's going to be great for you. But I'm trying to do my best here. I also have to put the palette on here and the paper so you can see me draw and paint everything. So I'm going to do the best I can with the real estate I have right here. And, um, you know, let me know in the comment section what you think. And maybe some of you also do things a little differently than what I'm kind of talking about. And you can share your experiences in the comment section. And this way other people can kind of listen to what you, your comments and your insights onto how you work with your watercolor. Do you work on your lap? Do you work on a kitchen table? Do you work uh, on an easel? Do you work on a table like I was, I'm doing right here? I'm standing at a table. So if you put all your insights, all your ideas, and you put it into the comment section in this video, people will be able to read all through those comments and find out all the different ways everyone works. And then everyone can maybe pick and choose what they might like. Somebody might like your idea a lot and use it. Other people might like someone else's idea a lot, and they're going to want to use that, or they like might take my ideas and say, I like the way Chris does it, but we all do things differently. Let's pool our resources together and help everyone together here on the channel to, you know, have a better and easier time with their painting and their artwork and working along on these videos. So I'm just trying to facilitate some really good um, conversation in the comment section if you want to take, you know, take some uh, time, go in the comment section and just write down how you create your paintings and how your setup is. And then this way people can read it and be like, oh, wow, yeah, I never thought of that. That's a great idea. And I'll be sure to, you know, read through that too myself i read through all the comments and i'm always excited that you leave comments many great comments and i thank you for them in my comment section so let's get started again we have our photograph set up here i'm going to um take a, an office pencil and start our sketch and then what i'm thinking here is we had a again in the beginning of the video i, I kind of discussed it a little bit but we had a friend a fellow artist that watches this channel all the time he sent in a photo to me on, on his um on an email and he, he sent me a photo on the email and it was a 
a, um, and you saw it in the beginning of the video here, but it's like a market picture and the market's sort of like on a street and there's like an angle to it and it's really looks tough to paint. I've tried those years ago because they look interesting in the photographs, but when I tried to paint those and draw those years ago, they just never seem to come out good. They, I, for some reason, I just always had a problem with those kind of like interesting ang angles, you know, on the streets and things. I, I just found that maybe doing more of a two-dimensional painting where we're just going to kind of, as you saw the photograph we just had on the camera here close up, it's more of like a two-dimensional painting you're in drawing. You kind of see the figures in two dimensions more or less. And there's some angles on the furniture. It's a, um, a market, an open market. It looks like a flea market with all kinds of cool furniture and antiques and things and people, ha you know, going in and checking things out. And so... Um, I hope we're going to have fun with this, and I'm going to try to keep it simple, too. I'm not going to try to get too caught up with too many details, but I'm just looking at it now. And so let's start. I'll probably start out with the umbrella first, because I think I can kind of lightly sketch that in and sort of see how it comes across the picture like that. And it's probably not quite halfway down the picture. It's probably about maybe a third of the way up the picture, so I went a little too far, but that's why I lightly sketch first. Always lightly sketch first to get your your idea on your paper. So I'll do that. Okay, so that's my first very light pencil line. I hope you can see that. Like this. And then maybe I'll do this point on there too, like that. So we kind of get the idea that's a, an umbrella like that and you so you can kind of see light sketch first just let me see. okay umbrella yep uh, a little bit higher than halfway maybe halfway is about here it's higher than halfway halfway is about here a little higher than halfway so I've got that pretty good pretty accurate the edge edge of the umbrella is a little bit in here I have it a little further in maybe I'll go out a little further like that and then I also remember I'm going to leave it as is because I know I did start out with my 8x10 um, mat here. So this, this will go over the top. So I already know I have plenty of room. I put the tape, I put the tape uh, quite a bit wider and larger than this opening of the mat. So this way when we put the mat down we can move it around and have extra painting there. So that's why I did that. So now we have we know we can have a regular standard 8x10 mat, 8x10 mat, we can have a standard mat work and function with this painting in case we want to frame it. If it comes out really good, let's frame it. Mat it and frame it. Let's put it up on the wall in our studios, our houses. Maybe we just tape it up on the refrigerator, on a cabinet somewhere. Let's get our paintings, put them in our cubicles in our office, wherever it is. Okay, so now... We have this umbrella here, and um, this is going to be the post of the umbrella, so we know it's going to be about there. But it looks like someone, this person is in front of it, so we, we kind of just want to use this. The umbrella post is center of where the umbrella tip point of the umbrella is up top. That's going to be our post, so that's our tip of the umbrella. Post coming down, straight underneath like that. You can always use a ruler. So you can always take a ruler and say, okay, this is the tip of the umbrella I just created. Let me take a straight ruler and just make sure my umbrella post is good. And it's good. It's right in line with the tip of the umbrella. It would look awkward if it was not underneath the point of the umbrella. So we make sure we're lined up with the post and the tip of the umbrella, the point of the umbrella. That looks good. Now we can, I think we can start with some of the figures. That might be good. So I'm going to see this gentleman here. He's standing under the umbrella. His head is sort of above the umbrella a little bit. But his head is there. Like that. And then his shoulders come down this way. Like this. Then we have um, a, w a woman next to him to the right. 
So I'm going to get her hair in there and her... We're just doing some fun figures here, nothing too fancy. We're just trying to capture, I'm just trying to copy exactly what I'm seeing here. So her back is like so. And there's some things in front here, some antiques and things on the table. So she's behind those a little bit. And then she has on a uh, red t-shirt, it looks like, a collared t-shirt. And so we'll put her arm there in her elbow and then she's sort of maybe handling some things showing some people some merchandise this gentleman is um, his arm is here like this and his elbows here and then his shirt comes down here like so and then that sort of starts to blend in and melt into the things on the table so Let's not get too caught up and worried about these details on the table here. Let's sort of let those things just kind of the most important things in this painting I'm thinking in my mind is really let me get the figures really solid and looking good. The umbrella is kind of simplified and easy. It's a large white umbrella so that blocks that whole area up here of just white umbrella. Beautiful. We have some roofs up here. We'll do those in a little while. There's a roof up here and some walls. It looks like a barn or a structure over here. So we'll get we'll get that in a little while, but let's get the figures done. That's the most important thing right now. So, okay, so we have the two figures. Gentleman standing here. Another um, female figure here. She's got hair, short hair, shoulder length hair, and it comes down like so. And have fun with this don't stress over it just try to get the basic shapes you see that's all you have to worry about and then there's some more things here on the table actually that's the gentleman's shirt there there's some light coming across his shirt I didn't see that for a second there there we go so he's got some bright sunlight on his shirt I'll paint that in more or less but I want to get some pencil lines in there just to show that that's what that is and then there's some more things on the table over here and then we have another figure that's a bit away from the figure here there's something over here too I think it looks like another maybe an, maybe another umbrella or something else here and then over here probably about right about here is this other female figure she's over here she's looking at some things so her hair I'm gonna draw her face in here just kind of block out where her face is she has sunglasses on so I'm just gonna put some sunglasses there she has some dark hair there And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Remember, this is a cool day out here. This might be in the autumn. This, uh, All the figures are kind of, well, t-shirts. This woman has on a uh, sweat jacket. So it might be a little cool out here in this open market, antique market it looks like. So I'll get that shoulder here and I'll get her arm. Her arm is going across and she's looking at some things, maybe picking some things up and looking at some things. So I'll just put a little bit of a hand there. I tend to draw maybe like a mitten for the hand, like instead of trying to get too, too detailed with anything, I just draw what looks like a mitten, like a, a winter mitten that you might wear in the winter time. Start off with that and then when you start painting you might find that you can get a little more detail with it, but I don't think we need much more detail than that. Okay, and then we can kind of see there's a table in front of her. So we'll sort of get that table in. It looks like a um, like a nightstand. So we'll get that in there. And it's sort of like this. Like that. And let's not, again, let's not get too worried. Let's just let that go down like so. Like basically, we're drawing like almost like a cube or a like a, re a rectangle, like a 
like a, a rectangular tissue box. Uh, always remember, try, um, this is a thing I mentioned, uh, not to get too far in the weeds here and get too detailed, but a lot of times when you're drawing things, it really is helpful if you can just look at something in the photograph and say, what does that actually look like? I mean, I know it's uh, a nightstand of some sort, painted and so forth, but what, what might it look like if it wasn't a nightstand? What could I kind of say that might look like the shape of that? And it kind of does look like a, a tissue box on end, like a long, like rectangular tissue box standing up on end. So you could look at it as, wow, that's just a tissue box standing up on end. And then that kind of helps you in your mind to think like, oh yeah, I'm familiar. I know what a tissue box looks, box looks like. And in this way, you won't be trying to like think in your mind, oh, I have to draw, um, I have to draw a nightstand and then look at all those details. And the next thing you know, we're kind of stressing out over how are we going to get this nightstand with all these details. And instead of doing that, let's just draw a rectangular shape or again, a, a tissue box basically standing on end. And there we have it. Now, when we go to paint this, we can add in more details if we want. And that's kind of the same thing over here. I'm seeing another tissue box over here. I'm just talking out loud here. And there's another rectangle, rectangular shape here, looks like. And it goes across this way on an angle, like that. You can kind of see that. That's like a rectangular table. Could be maybe like an old sewing machine, antique sewing machine or something. This looks like a nightstand, an antique nightstand. And there's, you know, the top of the table here. And then there we have it. And some angles here to work on. Not a big deal. And then we have this um, female figure. She's standing here. And then there's something else over here, too. There's another bit of um, information over here. Looks like another table, possibly. So we'll just draw another table over here. And we'll kind of just let these things fade out. We're not too worried about that. And then over here, there's something else too. There's a painting actually up here um, on an easel. And it goes up to her shoulder like this. And it's on an angle on an easel. So this is a painting that is on display like that. And I think I see the, the easel here. And it's kind of one of the legs is here. So we have that. It looks pretty good. And then let's get in the other information here. There's a building behind here. And that goes straight up like so. Like that. And then there's a roof here. So we'll just bring that roof as we see it here. It goes across here. And it goes up like this. And it goes across over here. And there's some shingles on that roof. Looks like wooden, shig wooden shingles. Um, those old shake shingles, the wooden ones that you see on the old roofs. So that's what that looks like. We'll add in some of those um, shapes of the shingles, the wooden um, roof shingles there. And then there's some vertical uh, siding, for, like some bar barn siding, some vertical siding like this. You can see the vertical lines. So I'm just adding in some vertical lines. doesn't have to be perfect. I just try to make sure they're kind of somewhat in line. So you can also, again, again, you can also take a ruler and just kind of make sure the, the lines are somewhat, it doesn't have to be perfect, but you can get them kind of straight. And you skip over the, um, the umbrella, the white umbrella. You don't want to draw pencil lines through the white umbrella at this point. I know most of you, all of you know this already, but I just mentioned it anyway. And that's some other post or something over there. And then there's another more vertical lines for the siding over here. And then once you get over here, you can just loosely do these here. And we probably won't even paint those maybe. We might add a few little shadows or something for those side, those uh, vertical, um, vertical splices in all of the wood siding on the side of this barn. And then over here, we see another roof over here. It looks like it's over here this way. And it's like this over here. And then there's another wall over here. So we can start getting in this line here, which is the other wall in the far distance of the other barn. So we're pretty much good. This is like the, the most of what we're going to want to do for this. And then there's some other th shapes over here. We can just kind of put these other shapes in. There might be some rectangular shapes and some other 
just information, but nothing too important. You know, you don't want to remember we don't want every detail. We just want to get the main details. I would say your main details you want to have and kind of work on on this painting are definitely your figures. That's your focal point. Let's work on our figures, get those in really good. They don't have to be perfect. You can see my figures are not perfect. And once you paint them, they're going to look way better. Always remember that. <laughs> I've probably said this a thousand times. When you're drawing figures or drawing anything, actually, when, you, when you're pencil drawing, your pencil drawings are always going to look a little weird, a little off. You have to work through that and just tell yourself, trust yourself. You, you got your pencil drawing as best you can. You're not doing a ton of erasing. You just want to get it the best you can get it. And if you're practicing on a consistent basis, maybe 5, 10, 15 minutes a day, pencil drawing and drawing with a pen, pencil, magic marker, whatever you have, and you're just working a little bit every day with your pencil sketching, you're automatically just going to get better over time, week after week, month after month, and year after year. So, but even probably the, the best artists, even in the world, will probably say, hey, you know what? They're going to tell you maybe sometimes my pencil drawings are not looking that good when I'm drawing them, but then when I start painting everything in it, everything looks better. And then always remember too, if you see something that might look a little bit off, don't be afraid. You do do a little bit of erasing once in a while. Like I can see that I can make this arm a little bit longer here. That arm looked a little like I needed to move it down just a little bit here. Not a problem. And again, we got the mittens on there for the, it's uh, maybe, it's not, it's actually autumn time, but the mittens here are just to draw the hand in. We don't need to draw all the fine details of hands, just a little bit of uh, an indication of a mittens for, for the hand. Over here we have an elbow and an arm a little bit. Here we have a little bit of an elbow alongside this figure and over here. So two elbows, you're painting, that's it. An arm over here, an arm over here and a hand. And then we're going to draw the faces in a little bit. And this person here, the guy in the picture has a hat and also... Um, it's he's facing away from us and so that's just going to be here it makes it easier to to do this painting if we don't have to do as many um, detailed facial features and things like that but I think this is enough that we have we have a good amount of information here so I hope that you are working along and having a good time and there we go that, that's about it I look at this pencil sketch and I can see that it looks pretty dark enough that you can see everything. And again, you're working from this photograph, I'm sure, too. But uh, have fun with this. And again, try it a few different times. Um, I'm going to erase this uh, face here of this figure a little bit. I just want to get this a little better. I just want to make it a little better. And, and we'll paint in the details, too. So I'm just going to do a little bit of fixing up there and there's some sunglasses too so and again it's going to look much better when you paint sometimes these pencil drawings they don't look the greatest don't worry about it do the best you can get your pencil drawing in and then you're going to go in and start doing your painting and have a great time painting this okay so let's get started with the painting in just a second let me just take a quick break We've done a lot of, lot of drawing right now, so when I do a lot of drawing, I personally like to take a break for 10-15 minutes, and this way I can come back kind of refreshed, and then we'll start going in and mixing our colors and, and st start working on the painting. And I don't think this painting is going to take a long time because we're just going to, again, do some... It's a composition, really. We're doing a fun composition here. We're not trying to... You know, if it comes out great, hey, we do have a good painting here, but we're just going to work on it as a composition, saying we're just practicing our skills here to get better. And uh, it seems like that's really what it is. Painting is just practicing your skills all the time. And then eventually, after practicing so many years, your paintings are just becoming better and better. And then it's easier and easier. So that's all it is, really. So let's keep practicing, getting better. And uh, let's start the painting in just a second. All right, so let's start working on the painting portion here. Um, let's see if I can adjust my lighting just a little bit. I was getting some glare on my phone, so I couldn't see that too much. Maybe you're seeing some glare there too. Okay, so if I have to move it. OK, 
Okay, that's about the happy medium there, I think. It's never easy in the studio here. I have a light above me and you can kind of see it in the phone, the reflection in the phone, so I'm trying not to have that happen. I think I'll move it out a little further. If I move it out too far, then I don't know if you can see that any better. Let's see how the lighting looks here. If I So if I move this light out a bit, that looks okay. I think we can, I think that's fine. Even if I move it out a little bit further, I think that should be okay. That's better. I don't see the glare on my phone now. <clears throat> All right, so I'm just going to use a, a simple uh, number four uh, Da Vinci, Maestro, uh, da Vinci uh, travel brush, which is a Kalinsky sable brush, um, all natural hairs, very small brush. So we have a lot of control with a smaller brush. If we were to go in and use a very large brush, it would be very difficult at the, this point where we're just trying to do some smaller details. So let's kind of go with that idea and I'll just get some brown and some burnt umber French ultramarine blue so we're going to make a dark here for some of our hair burnt sienna maybe more burnt uh, French ultramarine blue so let's do that let's get some let's start off with this um, center figure here this is the that's the man he has a hat on there like that. You can see the brim of the hat. Then I rinse off my brush, tap it on a sponge. I have a sponge next to my water container. Or you can use a tissue, dry off some uh, water off your brush on a tissue. And then you want to smooth out and kind of mellow this wash down a little bit, make it a little lighter. Maybe a little more burnt sienna. This gentleman has a more um, darker complexion. So we're going to do that like so and he's wearing a um, grayish blue so let's kind of get some cerulean blue mixed into that other mixture and let's see if we can get now that's a pretty good dark cerulean blue French ultramarine blue burnt umber that's a pretty good dark there. So let's go with that. And then over here it's pretty dark. So we're just going to get the darks in here. Again, we're doing pretty much the alla prima technique, which is let's start with the darks. Let's just start going in, getting the darks in. His shirt is like so. And then it's got a little bit of a so we can see that the light is coming from the left side across the picture this way. So, we always mention, let's try to get our light insignia. So we take a magic marker, Sharpie marker, and we make a spotlight insignia like that. That just will let us know when we glance at this over here and say, oh, that's where the light's coming from across this way. So whenever you kind of feel like you need to check where your shadows are and where your light is, you just look and you find on the paper where your insignia is for your light, your light um, spotlight in a sense, or your sunlight. And then that gives you where you, where your light source is coming from and then you can kind of get back on track again. So um, I'm going to start to sort of get the shapes that I'm seeing. They're pretty dark here, like that. And there's another one this way here, coming this way. And there's another triangular shape there. Like that. Then there's a bit of uh, elbow here. And then also over here, like that. So 
So as you can see, I'm just following the shadow patterns that I see on his shirt. And then I try to maybe blend it in a little bit. And if you kind of lose a little bit, uh, lose a little bit of control of the wash, blot up a little bit with your tissue. But I do want to capture that feeling of light, so that's where I'm going to leave this at the, this point. Okay, now let's we'll move over to this figure. Uh, same thing, dark hair, um, burnt umber, burnt sienna, French ultramarine blue. That's a pretty good dark for the hair. Burnt umber, more brownish. And I'm just going to try to do the hair. And the hair is all dark. There's no real light that I can see. Discernible light, it's just all, she has dark hair here, like so. And then we'll do her skin tones once that hair dries. So let's remember, don't try to do any facial um, flesh tones on her face yet. Because um, once you get her hair in like we just did now, that has to dry 100% before we go in and do any facial flesh tones. So that's really important to remember that. And um, we'll just continue on and let's do some red shirt. She has on a red shirt, so let's get some red, cadmium red. Maybe a little bit of a lizard and crimson too. Let's mix up the colors a little bit. If we go with a red, why not? Let's do a little red, orange, even to a little bit of orange maybe. But let's mix our reds up a little bit. Let's not just go with one red. Let's sort of mix things up a little bit. So we'll start off here. And again, I'm using a number four Da Vinci travel brush, which tends to really look um, like it fits what we're doing here perfect for the figures anyway. We can use a larger brush later on, but let's start off with this when we're doing our figures. And then, as you see, I, I get that cadmium red really in the beginning here. Then I rinse off my brush a little bit, dry off a little bit of the water on a tissue. Then I go back in, maybe I add a little more water here. Just to get the, and I'm gonna go with some more alizarin. I'm gonna go with some alizarin crimson, pick up a little bit of the burnt umber, just to get that alizarin crimson a little darker, because there is a little bit of darker darks here over on this side. And on her, on the back of her shirt, there is a little more darker darks. And under here, too. Like that. And then there's another bit of red there. And there might be something in front here. And again, we won't um, do her flesh tones of her arm yet. And let's go in and get some more. Okay, it's a little lighter there on the front. And I think that's pretty good. And we can even just go here and like that. And then I see in the she might have on a a darker skirt over here. So we'll just sort of blend that in. And I think that's good right there. It looks fine. We have some other things on the tables over here. So remember, let's just start with the um, let's start with the. the figures and the clothes and not get involved with uh, anything else. Let's just stick with that. The figures, the clothing, and that's it to start with. Okay, so we now we have both figures here pretty much good. We just have to come back and do the flesh tones once that hair dries 100%. Let's go over here and we will work on this figure here. Um, very, very light 
pink type of top. Let's try to paint that just the way we see it. So over here you have a light pink color. The light is coming from again this direction here coming across so the light is lighting up the back of her uh, sweatshirt as well as her arm. So let's keep that in mind. And then there's more sweatshirt over here. And some more of her over here, like her arm. And there's some more there. So we're just trying to get that pink color. And it comes down here a little bit, slopes down there. And then she has on some black pants. So we'll do, get those black pants there. Black jeans, maybe. Maybe some jeans. Maybe we'll make some jean color. Cerulean blue. We could change things around if you want. I'll make some blue jean color. And uh, do that. And then there's some other objects and things at this flea market that we're, um, we're, we're drawing in here. There's all kinds of things in the, in the painting, so we don't have to worry about getting everything exact because we're going to have something here in front of her legs. So that'll be a little something that's kind of in front of her legs there. And... Um, And then this over here goes around her arm, like that. And she has some darker hair. So I'm going to mix around some of that brown. And it looks like her hair comes down here. So I'll try to get her hair in now carefully here like that and then it kind of the light catches the her hair quite a bit in the sunlight over here so I I'm going to leave that I'll leave the back of her hair kind of light. And then I'm going to blot up a little bit. And we'll, we'll do with the flesh tones of her face um, next. But we want to let that hair dry first. So let's do the hair first. Let that dry. And it's not super dark. Her hair is a little bit lighter. Maybe it's a little bit darker over here. So we add a little bit of French Ultramarine Blue, which is darker, just so we can get some darker hair over here a little bit. There, that looks good. Like that. Okay. Always remember, don't worry about it if it doesn't look perfect. As you're painting, you have plenty of time to let things dry and go back in and do touch-ups. The worst thing to do is panic when you're doing watercolors because you always have, you can always patch things up, make things look a little better. You can always repair some things, go back in, adjust things a little bit, blot up some things. Don't ever worry. You have plenty of time to let things dry and then reevaluate. So let's do that. Let's take a break. Let this dry. We'll reevaluate how everything is looking. I, I think overall I'm kind of happy with the way everything is looking right now. And again, we still have to um, remember that we're working with the light. So our figures have light on them. So we have to remember we might be doing some, um, we might be doing some, I would say, uh, negative shape painting soon because we want to, negative shape 
paint around the back of this figure here, this female figure here. Let's do that. And then also, too, let's um, do some flesh tones. We have to do some flesh tones still on this figure here, this female figure. So we still have plenty of work to do on our figures before we start doing the rest of the, the items in the painting, the uh, the rest of the subject matter, which is some, you know, nightstand, maybe a old sewing, antique sewing machine. Um, we have some other items, maybe a chair. We have an easel with a painting. Some barns in the background here with some roofs. We can add in some more information here, have a good time of it. But I'll I'll really mention this. Once you get these figures in, halfway decent, you're really kind of like home free because the rest is really easy. It's, you know, or more simplified, let's say. The more challenging thing here is the figure. So take your time with the figures. Don't rush it. Do like we're doing here. Get your darks in first. Find your darks, the darkest darks of these figures. Get those in first. Then you start working into your middle tones, your middle tonal values, the light pinks here, the lights over here. We did a little bit of gray and lights over here for the, the, um, the, the male figure here with the t-shirt on and the light coming from this direction here. And um, again, it's uh, we're focusing just on the figures right now, and that's it. And if we can do the figures and get those in halfway decent, the rest of the picture is going to really come together fine. Okay, so we're going to see how that actually proves out in just a minute. Let me just take a quick break, and then after we um, come back from the break, we're going to actually um, do a little more work on the figures. I think we're almost 100% there with the figures. And then from that point, we can just actually go in and start developing a few little details with the roof and the siding here, the vertical lines in the siding, and some more. We'll, we'll work on these a little bit, the, um, the nightstand and the old antique um, sewing machine and a few other little items here and there. But these are sort of fun items we don't have to add too much detail to. We can just make them blocks of color, basically, and light, and, you know, we make some good colors, dark and light colors to sort of work with the light patterns that we have here with the light coming from the left side across the picture. So we'll remember to do that, get the light in the shadows of your, some of the items here in the foreground. And, um, and then you're really home free again. It's pretty much, once you have your figures in, it really is more of a very simple painting. And I wanted it to be this way. We did see that picture, that photograph in the beginning of this video where that looked like a really tough painting to do for a watercolor artist. If you're going to want to paint a picture like a street fair or a street painting with a market and all of those details and the angle across the picture the way it was, that is so difficult. I mean, I always like think when I, I used to try to do those paintings and it just got me crazy frustrated. Like, oh my gosh, I couldn't get, you know, the details that I wanted looking good. And I find that something like this, we we almost like zoom into just a small por portion of a scene like that. Like this is an antique market. And then we're like a photographer. We go in here like a photographer and we look at a, a couple people and we zoom in with our camera and we take a picture of just a few figures and some interesting backdrop and, you know, the white umbrella, nice light, bright lit umbrella. And all of a sudden we have something more manageable we have for a watercolor painting for us anyway. Let's not work too hard. Let's not really, really, you know, create more difficulty than we really want to handle in a painting. Let's try to make our paintings more simple. That's why I do mention it's great though. If you want to tackle a painting with a lot of details, go for it. Don't let it stop you. But I always find that um, if you can kind of simplify things a little more and um, try not to get so much bogged down in, in details, you'll be probably better off. It'll be a little easier to navigate your uh, watercolors. Um, so, all right, let's get started in just a second with the rest of the figures, and then we're going to um, finish up. Okay, so we're getting back here. We'll get some more um, flesh tones here. Let's make some flesh tone up here. Um, some cadmium red, burnt sienna, maybe a little bit of us... Um, I would say yellow ochre or raw sienna might work too. Yeah, either one is good. I think that looks pretty good. Let's get some flesh tone on this face here. There we go. Some flesh tone there. Flesh tone here on the arms. 
Okay, so this figure has a little lighter flesh tones there. And I think that looks fine. And then here too, we have some flesh tones on the hands. Flesh tones on the face here. And again, once you start, again, painting and f adding in your paint to your, your pencil drawing, you're going to notice it looks so much better. And then you just carefully add in your paint, slowly and carefully, and you'll start to, it'll come together for you. Again, I always say the pencil drawings always look a little bit off. They always look a little bit awkward when you're drawing something in pencil like this, especially figures. Figures always look to me awkward before you paint them. But once you take your time and you start painting in your flesh tones and painting in your figure, the clothing, the hair, all these type of things, if you just be very careful about it, just kind of add in the colors that you're seeing. You start with your darks first, like your dark hair first, and then you work in your flesh tones. Once the hair is completely 100% dry, you'll notice that it really looks better. It comes together a little more, and then you'll be very happy with the results you'll have. Um, but the key is not not giving into thinking it doesn't look good with the pencil drawing and then we start erasing and erasing. Remember, trust your instincts, get your first drawing in there. And again, it's all about just keep practicing over and over again. And every time you go in, you're a minute better, an hour better, 40 hours better, 80 hours better, and you just keep going. So we have this figure looks good. We have the flesh tones on there. We do have to do the glasses. There's some sunglasses on this figure. So we're going to wait till the flesh, t flesh dries 100% the flesh tones. So now we can start doing some other washes. Let's go with a larger brush now. So I will move up to a larger brush to start doing some of these larger parts. I'm going to move up to a number eight. Uh, da Vinci Pierre Kalinsky uh, 1503 Germany travel brush. So now I'm going to go in, rinse off the brush, take a little bit of water off on the sponge over here to the right, and then I come back over and I say, okay, let's start working on some of these darks over here. So we go in French ultramarine blue, burnt umber, cerulean blue. Burnt umber. French ultramarine blue, cerulean blue. And I think this that looks about like the tone. Uh, a little bit of cobalt blue. A little bit of brown, a little bit of brown. Cobalt blue, brown. And this sort of just trails down like this. So we can just kind of and you can just paint this right out of the painting like that. And always remember, we're going to have our mat going over the top of this, so you're not going to see everything. So you can just you can work some of these washes right down off the page. Um, burnt umber I can see here with French ultramarine blue, quite a really really dark dark burnt umber French ultramarine blue. And if you see two areas with the same darkness, you know, the same tonal value, you can let them sort of blend together. So you won't worry if these two washes right here blend together. There's sort of this similar values, a little bit darker on this one here. And then more over here, we got a stripe on there. So this is maybe a stripe there. And again, let's not worry too much. We'll have to let that, there's like a stripe that's a little bit lighter here. Let's let that go till we get done with the, um, the drying process for these darks over here. So let's let this dry now. That's white paper on the top of the table here of this uh, antique sewing machine. There is, um, we could always draw in something if you see something and you're, let's draw in the uh, 
sewing machine here. Like that. And that's a dark too, so let's go with burnt umber, French ultramarine blue. And we'll, we'll kind of get that dark in there, which is the, the sewing machine part of the table. Like that. Burnt umber, French ultramarine blue. Okay. And then I just add a few shapes in there. Okay, and uh, we can do the front of this. Very light. And we just paint in shapes like drawers for the nightstand, like that. And I think we'll leave in the we'll leave the table or the nightstand top white paper for right now, and then we'll maybe we'll get in a couple uh, verticals here like that. And I think once we have this, I think we're doing pretty good now. I think we have everything working in our favor right now, and we're going to do some. We will do some verticals like that. Be careful not to lean into the paint as much as you can, and uh... okay. And I think we'll take a break. And in a second or two, I just want to get a few bits of wash on here. Okay, let's take a quick break and uh, we'll finish up. I think we can just um, pretty much uh, finish up with a few more details on this, but I think we, we accomplished what we wanted to. We got the figures looking really good 
and now we'll just add in some details here and there just to kind of finish out the shapes and the the lines of the of the painting where there's some more um, darks and lights and small details but I think we're pretty much uh, almost 100% here okay we'll come back and finish up in just a second okay let's get back let's get some spots of color on here we pretty much have things looking really good um, we talk about all the time when we're doing a la prima we get our darks in first so let's keep working with that idea burnt umber french ultramine blue burnt sienna that's our combination for really good darks and i'll just start to again get some of these darks in up here for the roof shingles so let's just go up there and do some of those like that and a little bit here a little more dark there I think would be good Okay, and then there's a little bit of shadow up top there. Some cerulean, it looks like cerulean blue maybe with that shadow. I rinse off the brush a little bit, check off some water on the sponge and then come back in here. I think we have a shadow under there like so. Like that. Okay, so I did add some shadow there. There's some shadow along here. I'm going to try to blot up a little bit of that shadow there. Blot up a little bit and then we can always go back and add a little bit of dark once that dries. One of the keys to watercolor is definitely letting things dry while you're working. You kind of always are thinking about what can I let dry and, and wait till Wait, you know, what can I, what can I paint in and then let dry and then come back to later? That's kind of a lot of the times you're going to be thinking that as a watercolor artist. Ah, what am I going to let dry next after I've just painted it and then I'll come back to it later to do something else? You'll always be thinking that. That'll be your thought process most times as a watercolor artist. You're always going to be thinking, you know, sometimes I try to, with the glazing technique, with the glazing technique, it's a little more simple. You're kind of just always light wash first, let it dry 100%. Come back in, do another little bit of a darker wash next, let it dry 100%, and then come back and do your darkest darks last for the glazing technique. After each glazing gets dry 100%, you go back over and do a little bit darker of a wash. Here we're doing it the opposite. We're doing our darks first. So we're doing all of our darks first. And then we're carefully going in and doing all of our medium tonal values uh, after uh, we have our darks in. So that's really the sort of the reverse of glazing technique is the alla prima technique for the most part. And then sometimes you'll use both both techniques in the same painting or you'll just sort of get the feel for it. So you'll get the feel for it after a while. You'll just kind of, after a while you just kind of get to know both techniques and you'll just automatically um, be able to do both at the same time or one or the other. I'll do a couple splashes there for a little bit of variety just for the umbrella. Maybe there's a, a touch of uh, shadow over here on the umbrella. So you can put a little bit of a shadow on the the part of the umbrella that goes across there just a little bit maybe it helps look a little better maybe a line or two like this lightly though I wouldn't go with anything dark I would maybe actually take a touch of uh, 
maybe flesh tone even, and maybe do a little bit of a warmer color there on this side of the umbrella. And then we kind of get the feeling that the light's coming from here. It's lighting up this side of the umbrella with pure white paper. And then over here, just a little touch of warmth with some f leftover flesh tone. Might as well use the same colors we've been using. And that looks pretty good. And then you blot a little bit with some tissue maybe too. And uh, maybe a little bit of that flesh tone as well in the siding over here of this building back here just to have some warm and cool everywhere instead of just going with cool shadows we go with some warm and cool and the same thing over here blue some shadows over here on this side there a little bit blot up some paint there maybe there's a like that and then uh, let's just finish up with some uh, raw umber, burnt umber. I'll use some grays over here, burnt umber, French ultramarine blue. I'm going to stick with the same colors we were using before. I really don't want to kind of go too far off of the colors we did use. Maybe a little bit of, a little more warmth, almost like a gold color. And we'll make a frame here. Like that, so that's a frame for the painting. And then the painting, I'll add a little bit of cerulean blue. And so here we'll just do some. So that'll be, that'll be our painting over there with a little bit of detail on it. And uh, we have some of these lines here. And there's some more. And I would do some red over here. Cadmium red and some alizarin crimson. Just some detail, again, some fun detail there. Also, tying in with the same colors. And I'll do a little bit of darker. Um, a little bit of cerulean blue over here on the front of this. Uh, so there's a, the um, sweatshirt here, sweat jacket. A little bit more shadow on the front. More light on the back here. Of the sweatshirt and then we have we'll go in with our we'll go back to our smaller brush here and just get a little bit of detail the flesh tones are now dry for for the face of this figure so we just put some glasses on and then we just do some flesh tone and we just do some sometimes leaving it just maybe it, sometimes it's good just to do a touch of detail here and there and if it doesn't look good then no problem you just lift it up so sometimes too much detail is not good so we just we'll go back in and get a little more of those glasses the uh, sunglasses there I think that looks fine. Uh, this figure over here. Just a little bit of shadow for the eyes. A little bit of a dark there. A little bit, you know, like a, a little bit of a dark red. Or like just a little bit of a shadow. Actually, just a little bit of that brown and blue. And that looks good. And it's always good to maybe blend some things together. A 
little bit of light on this side, shadow on the other. And a little bit of a shadow over on this side. I'm trying to just create a couple shadows. And uh, I think a little bit of white here, some titanium white out of the tube, just to recapture some of the, maybe some of the whites and lights here. So I just want to get a little bit of the shoulder up here. with the uh, white paint. I painted that frame here with that painting too close to the figure. So that's where I kind of wanted to just blend that in a little more. You can always change things around a little bit. Blend things together a little more. And then there might be some other details we might want to add in. Cerulean blue, burnt umber, burnt uh, French ultramarine blue. I'll get a fresh clean tissue here, dry off some of that paint, dry off some of the paint so that I have a nice, somewhat dry brush. And then there's some more things here. So there's something there. And there's a few more details here that I'm looking, just looking, I'm looking at the painting and just trying to pick up some things that are a lot of vertical lines in this painting. So if we do a couple horizontal lines across, that looks better. And then there's some more, there's some other things over here. So we're going to try to add a few more details to things kind of in this area here, just to try to make a little more excitement over here. And then over here we can go darker on this side. There might be like a some sort of a there might be another umbrella on the other side of this umbrella here. I think that's what that is. Maybe. And then there's some other And there's another dark under there. And then we said we were going to do some of that color over here. It looks a little bit more interesting like that. And then there's some darks over here maybe. I don't want to go too much more with details. I think if we just do another something like that. And there's another bit of detail up here. I'll put some light there on the... And I, I think this is fine. I think this is good for a composition. I think we can kind of be uh, happy with this so, f so far. I mean, actually, this is actually good. I think we can just leave it as it is. Again, it's a good composition. We had a lot of fun doing it. We're not going to go too much more. I think this is a perfect spot to just um, um, finish the painting. A little bit underdone, but sometimes when you, we underdo things, it looks a little better. Um, I think we had a good sense of getting our figures in first with all the darks. And then some of the lights, too, as well, uh, on the figures. But for the most part, this is a, a good painting for a market or a um, flea market type uh, painting or maybe even a farmer's market. Um, you know, any kind of, like, um, outdoor scene like that with, you know, markets and so forth is really, I would tend to think I like more zooming into a, a section of the market and capture some figures perhaps or some maybe some 
other items. Maybe it might be a, a painting that you just kind of want to focus in on a few of the like uh, antiques that are in the um, market on some tables or some fruits and vegetables if it's a fruit market uh, and vegetable market like a farmer's market things like that some pumpkins um, you know things like that for the season it's uh, in the U.S. Uh, of A it's uh, almost autumn now and um, there's going to be a lot of uh, people that go out to the farmer markets and they pick up their pumpkins making pumpkin pie and having some pumpkins for decorations for Halloween so all these fun things, we can just kind of incorporate them into our paintings, into our compositions. But I think this time we kind of focused on the figures, and I think that's really fun. Um, and again, we zoomed into the uh, scene that we found online just by doing some searching on the internet. We found something we liked. Basically, I zoomed into this picture that was quite a bit larger. I zoomed in and then just focused on a few figures to make a simplified um, composition that I wanted to. Um, versus painting too much information. So if we zoom in, capture just some information that we think is interesting, whatever you might like to, you're the artist, you'll pick out whatever information you might want to paint in a painting. But if you look at a, any kind of like an outdoor market type uh, photograph online, you can find something you like to um, zoom in on and just do a few things, a few items in the, of subject matter versus maybe getting too uh, bogged down with uh, massive amounts of subject matter that just become very, very difficult to sort of capture uh, in a real, um, you know, uh, exciting way that's going to look good in a watercolor painting. All right, so thank you so much again. I always mention if you haven't subscribed on my channel and you like to follow along with me here on YouTube, please just hit the subscribe button below on the right-hand side. All that does is just you'll be alerted when our next video comes out. Um, when we're working again in watercolor and drawing and painting in watercolor and we're doing all kinds of subject matter again all the time we're changing our subject matter it could be flowers one week seascapes the next flower you know um, we're doing figure painting of course things like this offbeat type paintings doing um, sometimes we'll do uh, ink and wash paintings something a little different again portrait paintings um, we'll do uh, landscape paintings outdoor paintings with trees rivers, waterfalls. We do every kind of imaginable watercolor paintings here on my channel. There's also a great amount of paintings that I've done uh, in the past on my YouTube channel here. I've been here like six, six years already now on YouTube, so you can always go back and just uh, check out my older videos, even though the quality isn't as gr is great. You know, my new cameras, I have new cameras, new microphones. I'm always trying to put better uh, equipment and, you know, trying to do a better job with my videos here for you. But um, some of the older videos, too, are pretty good on my channel. And they have, you know, again, you can just type in whatever subject matter you might like. If you say, I'd, mm, I'd like to do more flowers, you just type in my name, Chris Petrie, and you type in flowers, and you'll see I probably have 30 videos on flowers. And you can just go one by one and see which one you like to paint and work on. And you can just go in there and do that, too, as well. So don't ever feel like... If you're not seeing something you like right away on my channel coming up, if you are subscribing, you can always go back into my archives on my channel. And I have really hundreds and hundreds of videos uh, archived on my YouTube channel. So you just got to type in my name. Again, Chris Petri, C-H-R-I-S-P-E-T-R-I. And then you just type in whatever subject matter you like. So you'll type my name and then seascapes or um, boats or flowers or landscapes. And you'll see all those videos that uh, I've created in the past that are right there for your um, for your use. So you can use those and, and work from them if you like. And if not, you can just stick with us here week by week, month by month, and going ahead into the next year. Um, and this year as well, finishing out the year, we're going to do plenty of new exciting paintings. So I'm hoping you'll stick with me here on this channel uh, on YouTube. And um, we'll see you soon. Great to paint with you. And bye-bye uh, for now.